today on food chain i'm speaking with regional head for west africa for alliance for green revolution in africa shortened as a agra if you don't know agra agra is a an institution that is african centered and looks at promoting smallholder farmers across the continent today i'm fortunate to have foster boating here with me welcome sir thank you ma'am it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Me Let's talk about agric financing. Yeah. It has been one of the major challenges in Ghana. Yes. Smallholder farmers, you know, lamenting that banks are not coming to their aid. But when you go to the banks, they say they are coming to their aid. It's just a matter of having the proper documents. Your institution has three modules that it operates with government or development finance institutions uh, financial service providers and then users of financial services how is this approach working in ghana to help address agri financing issues okay. first of all i agree i mean if you look at ghana you realize that only four percent of the portfolio that the banks will go to agriculture mm. you see the problem here is the bankers don't really understand how agriculture operates. They lump everything together as one size fits all for all businesses. Thinking that gestation period is the same. Yeah. But it's not the same. <laughs> because when you plant maize, it will take about three months to harvest. Yeah. When somebody takes money and goes to Dubai and comes back, within two weeks he can sell and pay back the money. True. So you can't lump the same customers to one particular, give them one product. So it's difficult. But again, let me say that also our farmers are so fragmented. And so the transactional cost for bankers is also high. The higher the transactional cost, the more expensive the credit. Yeah. So they also have to find a way to reduce their transactional costs. That is why they find it difficult to loan money to smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. But they want models where they can support smallholder farmers through an aggregator, through a processor. And that's exactly what Agra is trying to do. We are trying to mobilize smallholder farmers strengthen the supply chain of most of the processors. Like if you take processors like um, uh, premier food, hmm? yeah, you, you aggregate a number of farmers around him. And then you give the farmers training to respect forward contracts. Okay? And so he will use these forward contracts, go to the bank, because he is an individual who has a muscle to take the money from the banks. And the banks respect him and know that he'll pay. Yeah. So he takes the money and then finance the smallholder farmers their inputs their fertilizer their whatever they need so that he can they can produce for him he takes away the cost of the input and pay back to the bank you, you, you get my mind okay so agra has been trying to look at this model there's also um, risk sharing models that we have where we bring an input dealer we bring uh, an aggregator we bring uh, the the farmers and then there's a cost sharing mechanism here the farmers will take, will try to pay one third of the cost. Mm. The bank will supply, will make sure that they are supplied with the inputs. And then the aggregator and the other partners in the value chain hold the rest of the risk. <laughs> so that they will chase the farmers, they supply the inputs and then they pay back. But banks cannot gallivant around every little village yeah. and start demanding farmers to pay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a difficult task. <laughs> well, they can have a representative. But that's a transactional cost. And that will go to the cost of the credit. So normally you need to buy down the risk for the banks. That is why government has instituted what we call the girl sale. Yeah, yes, the girl yeah, sale. The Ghana Incentive uh, Risk, risk Sharing, sharing uh, Facility. Yeah. Where what government is saying is if, if banks can loan money on their own balance sheet, it's not government's money. And you're able to select these people and provide in, in case they default, I'm ready to give you insurance to cover you. Okay? So that, that is also will help. That also will help value chain actors as well. I, I had the opportunity to interview Gasol and I think, yeah, so far they are doing quite well. No, every, every, every program has a teething pro problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes Ghanaians must have patience. I don't think you, they give back to you and you get to this level. <laughs> <laughs> you have to crawl, you have to yes. walk, you have to yes. fall down. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. we have no patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to learn. True. So, you have invested about $10.2 million in six projects. In Ghana? 
Yeah. It's, it's past that. I think we've so far we've done about 16.8 million. Oh, okay. Yeah. In Ghana, yes. In Ghana, 16.8 million. So, but the whole West Africa have a portfolio of about 54 million. 54. Yeah. Okay. So, I believe planting for food and jobs is one of the projects. Actually, we, it, it is not a project. We mm -hmm. did not support the project. Okay. We support the government to, first of all, when the government came out with the idea of planting for food and jobs, you know, it's a political statement. And you have to unpack the politician to understand. And I don't blame them. I mean, usually, um, very important vision comes from politicians, individuals, they dream. And we have people who take the dream and shape the dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we listen to the dream. So you are the shapers. I wouldn't say so. We <laughs> contributed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we look at it and say, look, I think uh, what you are saying makes sense. But tell us, how are you going to track success? And you know, politicians who throw jargons here, they say, look, let's sit down. Because everything that the government is proposing is not outside the National Agricultural Investment Plan. Because each year, you see, politicians are not telling you the truth. There's no new policy in the country. <laughs> I'm telling you from where I sit. Because when they come, the country has what we call the, the FASD, the, the Food and Agriculture uh, Development Policy. Mm -hmm. And it has, it's obsolete now, so AGRA is helping them do anyone. So it's, uh, it's from the FASD that they develop their plans. Everybody calls it different name, but you pick them. I want you generally sometimes to learn. Pick them and go to it. It's the same. People are giving different names to it. <laughs> it's the same. Whether metasip, whether investing, investing for food and job is the same. So the only thing is the approach, the implementation approach, and the commitment of the government. That makes a difference. Wow. So what we did was we happened to unpack his ideas and then we develop these ideas into uh, a strategic framework for him for, for, for four years or okay. five years. And then we come out with uh, indicators to track success and also develop a strategy to mobilize resources. That is what Agra did. Because let me tell you, every development partner in Ghana doesn't have the interest to help government achieve his aim. Because it's government who's supposed to achieve all this development. So all of us work for the government. All of us. We help him to achieve his vision. So what Agra did was to help them develop this plan. And then after that, Agra said, okay, your plan aligns very well with what we want to do in Ghana. Because every development partner should align his investment to government. Because we also want to look at improved seed, mm -hmm. market, yeah. extension, and it's in line with, 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 with our, our program. So we decided to pick certain regions and test certain models by aggregating uh, private sector and smallholder farmers around processes. We call it consortium. Mm. We bring this consortium of partners to work and service the smallholder farmer in terms of providing extension, providing input, providing finance and market. That's what we did. So you, you talked about tracking the progress. Yes. Recently we have done, uh, um, um, we did a, a study with IFPRI to okay. track the impact of the PFG. Okay. We have seen some progress, we have seen some challenges. Progress, and, and always people want to hear challenges, but I want to talk about <laughs> progress. But we dwell m most of our time On the challenges and the negatives. But once we, we are making progress, we should fashion a way to scale the progress. <laughs> I think the progress I've seen is one. Farmers are beginning to realize that the use of improved seed okay. can, can help them increase their productivity. They have seen it and they are using it. Because before the program, I think about only 20% or 16% of farmers were using improved seeds. Otherwise, they are using their own safe seed. But now they have seen that using improved seeds at least their yields have gone up significantly. That is one. Mm. Two, if you look at each country in Africa, met in Abuja in 2015, no, it was 2013, saying that they want to increase the use because they realize that our soils are so fragile and depleted. And for me, if you want to increase productivity, there are three things you need to look at. The planting material, mm -hmm. the soil, and extension, which is agronomic practices. Seed contributes about 30% to the yield, soil 30%, mm -hmm. then extension 30%. The other 10% is for God. He has to give you rain. rain. 
<laughs> but even that now we have the irrigation you see, I will come to irrigation. See, people are quick at talking about irrigation. We come to <laughs> irrigation. So first of all, you look at these three things. Okay. That is where you can improve yours. But I've seen that farmers are beginning to learn how to use this system. And then again, government before then, uh, the Echo was said that most countries should hit fifty percent kg, fifty kg of fertilizer per hectare. Okay. Ghana was around twelve kg per hectare. Burkina Faso was 10 kg per hectare. Mali, it was Mali who was up a little bit. Mali was around 18. Okay? Nigeria is nothing to write home about. And so, over time, with these kind of uh, flagships, countries have improved. Though Ghana hasn't hit the 50 kg yet, but we are around 25, 28. Okay. Which is quite commendable, but we wish we could go <laughs> much higher. But okay. Tapa will say the issue of smuggling fertilizers out of the country uh, is part of the reason why some farmers are having challenges with uh, how do you call it fertilizers. Recently, I spoke to uh, the CEO for the National Buffer Stock. Buffer stock yeah. Yes, and he's saying that they have transported some fertilizers to the north to address these challenges yeah there, there are multiple of fa multiple of factors it's not only smuggling mm. half of smuggling it, it, it you see it's, it's a human it's a human thing and uh, for me i think no government will sit there and say people should smuggle i don't think any government will come out with the policy and say smuggle <laughs> it's us so for me maybe government should change the policy of the subsidy okay you should place the subsidy at the end of production for instance when you go to America, they also give subsidies to their farmers. But do you know how they do the subsidy? No. They call something government set aside program. Because they believe that if you cultivate 10 hectares, there could be a glut and prices will drop. So government will tell you plant 8 acres. The 2 acres are bought it. But I don't want you to leave it fallow. Plant leguminous crop to enrich the soil. So they will come and inspect. Because it's also good for animal feed. And the government pays you for the set aside. Or you get it. He's yeah. not subsidizing your input. But he's paying you for growing that, that leguminous crop for livestock. We can also look at, instead of giving farmers fertilizer for production, we can say, look, we will subsidize the farmer, but we will not subsidize the input. If we're able to do that, and at the end of it, you have so much, government can support in terms of market. Government can give you a margin, okay? Okay. And for sure, people will plant because you have to plant before you get it. <laughs> you see? Yeah. You have to plant before you get it. But if people are not going to do that and you give them fertilizer, certainly they will, they will smuggle. And it's not the fault of the government. Okay. It is our attitude. And you know, those who are smuggling, they may not be even farmers. Wow. They may not be farmers. That poor farmer, he may not be the poor farmer. You have people going around. That become their business, <laughs> you see, and, this and this selling at cheaper prices, I and guess. Uh, well, well, because because we have subsidized by fifty percent, mm -hmm. that's that's a challenge. When the prices are lower in your country, there's always arbitrage. People will move it to a country where it's more expensive. Hmm. But Burkina Faso is giving thirty percent; you are giving fifty percent, so yours is cheaper. So if I buy it at any margin, I can still make profit. Wow! You see, you talk about irrigation. Let me tell you about irrigation. You see, everybody is talking about irrigation, but irrigation is also expensive. So you have to know what type of irrigation you want and what type of crop you want to irrigate. For me, I would never advise a government to irrigate maize field. Because the cost of irrigation is based on the number of gallons of water, water. that the plant will use. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the plant wa uh, water requirement for maize is not that high. So you don't need to... And you see, it has a broad leaf, so it will transpirate mm -hmm. very fast. Yeah. So why don't you look at rice? Rice is an aquatic plant. So if that is where you want, then you, you invest in that area. Except maybe you are providing irrigation for high-value crops like vegetables. Okay, but not for maize. By even vegetables, we can talk about greenhouse. That can also do greenhouse, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So these are the things you have to do. And, and not necessarily uh, those kind of big irrigation system you have bottom valley bottoms where you can harvest water and maybe 
develop artificial aquifers where you can water from time to time. Okay, so yeah. does Agra plan on supporting uh, tree crops? Actually, yes. Uh, Agra, actually, what we are trying to do here is we want to look at sustainable food system. Okay. And when we talk about sustainable food system, we are looking at from production to waste. Okay. In the past, our focus has been on food security, where we are looking at production and market. But we also need to look at the environment. How are we sustaining the environment? Because the environment is also an input in production. So Agra is much interested in environmental sustainability. So I don't think we will be off tangent to support any intervention that seeks to uh, sustain the environment, including tree crops. Okay. Yeah, because we have also come to realize that to build resilience of smallholder farmers, you need to start learning about how you intercrop some of these food crops with tree crops. Because normally tree crop farmers are well endowed than food crops. Government's plans on setting up an authority in this direction for, you know, uh, tree crop developments. <laughs> do you share in this vision? Why then? do you want to interview me on that? I work for Agra for now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me, let me, yes, I do. Okay. I do. Um, for me, I think, if you look at Ghana, our main export earning has been cocoa for a very long time. You realize that Cocoa alone gives us only 2.5 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. But most of the forest areas that we used to plant cocoa, we are losing the forest. So, arable lands for cocoa keeps on diminishing. So you start to have to look out for certain crops that can thrive well in those transition areas. And I think it's in the right direction for government to look at crops like mango, cashew, coconut, oil palm, uh, what do you call rubber, and uh, I think shear. Ah. These six crops alone, in five to ten years, can rake in about 16 billion more dollars for Ghana. And also, it can help us to also maintain the agroecology. Because most of the forests, you know, we are losing them. So, you can't grow cocoa. But those crops can thrive very well. Let's talk about COVID. COVID, yes. yes. How much has Agra invested in addressing, uh, in trying to cushion farmers against the shocks it has brought? Okay, good. I think um, we have uh, contributed to COVID uh, supporting farmers through, well, indirectly, uh, because uh, if you look at extension, we are using a lot of digital platforms, okay. investing in digitization, because um, the face-to-face -face extension didn't work at the time, because, you, because of social distancing, because of uh, restrictions in terms of people's uh, mobility and those things. So what we did was we used a lot of digitization, supporting a number of institutions who are using digital extension to send uh, information to farmers and to guide farmers. We also realized that during the COVID, we realized because of the restriction in mobility, labor was an issue. Because anytime there's a farming season, there's a yeah. labor movement yeah. from Burkina Faso to the north, north to Burkina, the movement is there. And so the only thing you have to do is you need to bring in mechanization. That's the way that you can enhance labor productivity on the farm. So Agra has supported a scheme. We call it Trot Trot Tractor. I don't know whether you have heard it before. Trot Trot Tractor. It's just like a Uber tractor. Okay. We supported these young guys where they have an app. So you need a tractor to plow your land. We just go out there and send your app. They aggregate all the, the requests and they come and plow for you. You see. So these are the kind of things we did. We didn't put our money in buying PPEs and those things. That they, those things are not sustainable. And we also did a lot of sensitization okay. for farmers to understand the the nuances of this COVID and how they protect themselves. So okay. what, what would you say government should focus on in this new normal with regards to agriculture? I think now we should have to do a lot of we need to really invest a lot of precision agriculture, digitization, very much. Because this time, face-to-face -face extension, I believe that every hamlet in Ghana has a mobile phone. I believe. If you go to uh, the, the remotest hamlet, it may, it may surprise you that people have, have a phone. Okay. Yeah, so can we utilize this technology very well for agriculture? 
for disseminating information because now people can do whatsapps even my grandma in the village hasn't been to school hmm. you send things on whatsapp you people wire money to their relatives through this momo they are able to retrieve so it can be a medium to send a lot of information I just had an educative moment with the regional head for West Africa for Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, Foster Boating. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. It's still the food chain. If you're wondering where I am, I'm on the premises of Agra. Uh, I just had a conversation with the regional head for West Africa for supporting for Agra and now I'll be speaking with the acting country director um, Bashiru Musa and he will be explaining and telling us more about Agra's uh, investments and positioning in Ghana. Welcome Thank Musa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us how Agra is making an impact in Ghana. Okay to, to start with I think um the, the contribution of the agricultural sector to the economy of Ghana is very fundamental. Currently, the sector is contributing to about 19.3% uh, of the country's GDP and is also, um, also sort of contributing also to about 60% of the employment in this country. So it tells you that agriculture has a very strong hold of the economy and so for us we are only in the business of facilitating and supporting the government of Ghana to be in the driving seat to drive its own agenda so most of our investments in Ghana are very much aligned to the government's vision of agriculture so in the past we have supported different entities in the agricultural space such as the research institutions I'm talking about SARI the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute, the University of Ghana, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, all of this um, to really be able to shape up the agricultural sector because I know our investment alone cannot do it, but then where the space exists and then you have the option to work with the government, so many things can happen. So for us, we have been able to align our resources with that of the government and we are taking agriculture to the next step. So I understand that you've invested in cassava, uh, maize, OFSP, uh, orange flesh sweet potato, soya bean. Tell us about these investments. All right, so um, as a country, we have a strategy. Uh, so the strategy is very clear in terms of which of the commodity value chains we can support. Now, <clears throat> what is also important is that aggressive investment alone cannot target all the commodity value chains. So in the case of Ghana, we have selected five commodity value chains okay. that we are supporting. One is rice. Mm -hmm. We also have um, uh, cassava. We have um, uh, soya bean. We have maize. And then we also have cowpea. So these are the commodity value chains we are supporting as a country for strategic reasons. One, because one, the government is supporting these crops under the planting for food and jobs. So already there has been a number of, you know, existing programs that are aimed at supporting the farmers to be able to increase their productivity. So we also thought that we could, in a way, align our investment to that of the government to be able to take it to the next level. So currently we are supporting, under the cassava window, we are supporting close to about uh, 110,000 farmers in Ghana who are basically in the business of growing uh, cassava. And in the rice sector, we are also working with um, close to about 150,000 smallholder farmers scattered across you know, this country where we are supporting them around good agricultural uh, practices, uh, also doing a kind of a market facilitation for them to be able to have opportunities to sell their produce and at the same time um, talking about the um, the maize we are also implementing a project that seeks to address the market constraints you know maize farmers face in terms of selling their produce there we are also targeting close to about 150,000 farmers in Ghana let me put you on the spot here as the 
acting country director as the acting country director for agra how are you positioning ghana to take advantage of the african continental free trade okay because i mean the Kwame Nkrumah once said that um, seek ye the independence of Ghana <laughs> and all other things <laughs> shall be added unto you. Interesting. Let me, let me rephrase this so that I, I try to bring in the context. In our case, so, so long as agriculture is concerned, what we need to really fix so that all other sectors of the economy could join in is the market segment of the value chain. If you're talking about markets, where farmers, we are telling farmers to produce, 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 and then nobody seems to be talking about where do they sell their produce when they produce. But, so that's, that's a very big vacuum where I realize that most people are not really talking about it. So after, you know, under the leadership of the president, uh, Nana Adudankwa Kufuabu, really is, is one of the space where we can talk about market and market dynamics, what really affects us as a continent, and how we can you know, take advantage of an international market to be able to move out of the corridors of Ghana to make business with other countries. So for me, it, it, it provides a kind of an enormous opportunity for our farmers to be able to sell their produce out, you know, out of this country and make money for themselves and, and their families. One last thing. Sure. Tell us how you are partnering with government to ensuring that uh, farmers are adapting to the new normal? Okay, one of the things is that, you know, um, there has been a number of initiatives, you know, by the government to support smallholder farmers. And one of the initiatives was basically to support, um, if you like, um, the, the processes with some kind of soft loans where they are able to access and then go into production because uh, a number of the smallholder farmers that we have uh, sort of get a kind of a pre-financing from the processes. So uh, in one hand, the government is providing this support aiming at these uh, processes who are small scale you know, businesses. And so they are also holding you know, the farmers and making sure that the farmers also have what it takes to be able to go into to, to farming. This has been an informative segment. I hope you enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. That was the acting country director for Agra, Bashir Musa, and we had a fruitful conversation as to how they look at partnering with government to support smallholder farmers in Ghana. This is Food Chain. That's what time will allow us. My name is Emma Davis. Thanks for sticking with me.